as Sam was uh, outlining, the area in which the, the fighting is taking place. It's a, a rather substantial area, but the aim of this particular operation is to capture this highway, Highway 47. And the aim is, of course, to try and strangle IS's main supply route from the group's uh, de facto capital in Syria, Raqqa, all the way across to Mosul in Iraq, where, of course, the Islamist group does remain in control. Now, Sinjar itself sits at this highway at the foot of the mountains, where you might recall the Yazidi tribe lives. Local legend also claims that Sinjar is the resting place of Noah's Ark. So, uh, as Sam was, was saying in his report, it's, it's not simply about the strategic, the very obvious strategic significance of Sinjar, but the symbolism of retaking this particular city really can't be understated. It was Sinjar that ini initially led to... President Obama to authorise the bombing campaign. It was the flight of the Yazidis fly, fleeing from Islamic State up into the mountains in Sinjar that originally captured the world's attention on Islamic State and led to American bombing and then led ultimately to the coalition that we now see in place fighting today. Mm, and of course thousands of those Yazidis still remaining within uh, IS control. Uh, but let's just uh, maybe now take a look at how the, the various, the strengths of the various forces stack up. The name of the operation, Operation Free Sinjar, very obviously, it's been carried out by well, 7,000, 7,500 Kurdish Peshmerga fighters, Yazidi fighters, whilst at the same time uh, the US led international coalition bombing IS positions. They also have command and control facilities and weapons stores in Sinjar, uh, which planes such as this will be uh, taking pot shots at. Now, the US military and Kurdish forces estimate that they'll be fighting around 600 IS fighters based in the town. Now, that number has, in fact, increased over recent weeks. The offensive was delayed uh, due to poor weather. Um, going back to the map, in terms of the numbers, 7,500 versus 600, uh, first instance, that looks like a, an easy fight to win, but it's the fighting will be taking place within the streets. It's the urban combat that will be exactly. very difficult. If it was in the plains anywhere around Sinjar, then it would be no contest. But Islamic State, building on the experiences of al-Qaeda in, in Iraq, is fantastic at digging itself in into urban environments oh. through the use of IEDs, snipers, conventional mines, and most importantly with Islamic State, large numbers of suicide bombers or large numbers of fighters who are willing to give their lives. Oh. We saw earlier on in the year in the fight for Tikrit that kept being announced that it had been surrounded, that it had been controlled, the Iraqi government had got control, and they hadn't because small numbers of Islamic State fighters were able to survive in the rubble for up to two or three weeks after mm. the Iraqi government had first announced that they had captured the area. And the significance of taking the highway is that it prevents Islamic State moving any more fighters into the area. The Kurdish Peshmerga have actually had a foothold in Sinjar since December last year when they launched a counter-offensive. But they've only controlled a very small part of the town. So to winkle out the rest of the town, it's been crucial that they've blocked the town off from any more Islamic State fighters. The flip side of that is it's given Islamic State almost a year to dig in. What's your assessment of the, of the relative skill sets of the fighters? I mean, of course, every time we hear of US, UK special forces on the ground, we imagine them perhaps to be playing a, a, a rather greater role than they might. But the Peshmerga, they're the ones that are doing most of the actual fighting, aren't they? Yes, the Peshmerga will be doing the sort of on-the-ground fighting. The special forces involvement will be directing air sorties, possibly artillery, which the Peshmerga do have. The Peshmerga also have, and they don't always get credit for this, conventional artillery, conventional mm. tanks, but it's not where they're... Useful, when you've got, useful yeah. when you're up in the mountain, yeah. It is, exactly. It's not, it's not a style of fighting that they conventionally use. But the main area where US, UK special forces, and indeed US force, US forces overall, is command and control, mm. because that's where the Peshmerga don't... Don't, aren't very strong. They're not used to mobilising 7,500 soldiers. They're not used to coordinating 7,500 soldiers with modern aircraft. They're also not brilliant at logistics, which again is one of the reasons why this offensive has probably taken as long as it has to get to where it is now. Just they're not able to marshal the troops and supply them in the area. I mean, one thing is guaranteed, it is certain to be a bloody battle anyway. Yes. Matthew, thank you very much for your time this evening. We appreciate it.